Hey y'all, thanks for tuning back into Chicanic. Uh, everybody's having a great week. Are y'all ready to see what happens when a customer does their own wiring and uh, installs things backwards? So today we're working on a John Deere riding lawn mower with a 22 horsepower Briggs and Stratton twin engine on it. And customer, I'm guessing that it wouldn't start before this all went down. So they bought a battery or I, I don't know. I don't, I don't know where this all started because we got some crazy stuff going on here, guys. And you can see their battery is March of 23. Um, customer installed their own battery, but here's where everything gets a little crazy. Okay. I got a black negative cable. I got a black positive cable and uh, I got I don't even know what this insulation is right here, <laughs> but everything is hooked up backwards. So when you don't know where things go, things can get scary here, guys. Okay, we've got the positive cable going on down here to, to the chassis ground, which is where the negative cable is supposed to go. And I've got the negative cable traveling around here to the solenoid. So what happens when you do that, guys? You burn things up. Now, I've already made a complete video about wiring, what to start with, and, and all the processes you need to go to figure out what's wrong with your wiring. If you do have any kind of electrical issues on your riding lawnmower, I will leave a link right up above. But today, I'm just gonna show you how screwed up this one is. Now, in a perfect world, you would have a black negative cable going down here to your chassis ground, and your positive cable, which should be red, so you know which one's which, will go to your solenoid, and that is for the starter. As you can see, one line goes in and one comes down connected to the starter down there, but what it also has is this little lead going to a fuse box. And a majority of the time a customer comes in and tells us that their rider was working fine and all of a sudden it does nothing at all, it makes no sounds, anything, I always tell them to check their fuse. And a lot of times people don't even realize they have a fuse on their riding lawnmower, but you do. Let's look at this one. Let's get down in here, the lead going to the fuse box. Now the fuse has another lead coming out of it that goes to your ignition switch, which actually the ignition switch is igniting everything else. So everything has to, you, it has to have a good fuse and everything has to go through there to go to the ignition switch to make everything like your fuel shutoff solenoid, your PTO switch, all your safety switches. So this is pretty important. And as you can see here, let me see if I can get any closer. This thing is melted. So it's actually a good thing that it burned up the fuse box because it could have traveled through the fuse box and into any other the wiring, the switches, the PTO switch and burned up that. Also, it's, I've had some people tell me that their uh, starter was spinning the wrong direction and the bendings wouldn't go up. That's a sign that you have your positive and negative cable backwards. So we're gonna change this fuse box out with the leads and hopefully it's gonna be an easy fix. But before we get into today's video, if you're a fan of saving time, money, and frustration while fixing your own small engine equipment while watching in-depth tutorials, you've come to the right place because that's what I do. I upload a couple times a week, and if that sounds interesting, hit that like button, smash that subscribe. Don't forget to hit the notification bell, and please leave a comment. I love to read through the comments, and I'll reply to all the early commenters. So first things first, I'm going to get these cables off, and we're going to remove this electrical tape and see what's going on here. Well, now I'm more confused because there's absolutely nothing wrong with the negative cable, nothing wrong with the positive, and they're perfectly long enough. But when I took the tape off, um, they connected some car battery cable ends to it and crisscrossed them. And I don't know why they thought they needed all that length because these would have gone just fine, but eh, I'm going to remove them. So I get these little replacement fuse holders. That's what it's called, fuse holders from Rotary. Sell them for $5.99. I grabbed another fuse. And why do I use my Rotary fuse holder? That's because when I go to the John Deere website and I look up their fuse holder, it doesn't give me a part number. And to remove this fuse holder, it's just held in there with a little prong. We're just gonna pull it on up here. See, that's what's holding it in there. Before I go to cutting on anything though, I am going to unplug everything from the battery and I've broke out my heat shrink wire butt connectors. 
and uh, these are pretty awesome. I found them on Amazon. I love using them. I will leave a link in the description box below. All right, I got everything unhooked now and I'm going to cut this box off and I'm gonna want to get as close to the base of it as possible when I snip it off because I want as much wire to work with as I could possibly have. So, got my snips here. Down here, close. Just like that. We've got one coming in, two going out. I'll show you how to put it back together. Okay, so you're probably wondering, how am I gonna make three lines go into two lines? Well, the two that are going out from it, I splice them about almost a half an inch back because I gotta twist them together because they're going with one of these lines. All right, so I got my wires hooked back up. You see the two that was coming out? Got them in the one side. This is my one coming in from the positive. I did have to charge the battery because it was dead. And now we're gonna check for continuity. And now I've got my multimeter plugged up to my solenoid lead so I can make sure that I've got power going back to my solenoid. All right, so let me set this where y'all can see it. And... See what it does. We want 12 volts. Are we ready? And money, money. Now I can reconnect. Oh, it's hard to see what I'm doing. My solenoid wires and. And now we can see it's going to turn the starter. Now, hopefully, the solenoid or the starter is not burned up. So we're going to check it now. I'm not wanting it to start because I am in my garage, but I'm just going to bump the key and we're going to see if the starter turns over. Oh yeah, guys. We got power. All right, so I took out those long gables and I'm just leaving those short ones. I've got everything still hanging out here. I'm going to tie that all back up, but let's see if she runs. And that's the fix. So guys, hopefully this video will save you some time, money, and frustration in the future. Just make sure if your mower is doing nothing at all, first thing to check is a fuse because every mower has one. If you haven't found me on Facebook, find me at facebook.com slash chicanic. Find me at Instagram at the real chicanic or find me at chicanic.com where you get your own t-shirts, hoodies, and long sleeve shirts. Thanks guys and have a great day.